Evening everybody and welcome to another mid 1960s to late 1960s Meccano set video. For this one we've scooted back at least two years, maybe as many as four years from the number seven set video. This one being, as you can see in quite large print there, the Meccano Ocean Terminal number six set. Now this one, as I have had a peek inside the box, but only a little peek, so it's almost a surprise to me as well. This one is of the silver painted variety where the number 7 was zinc plated for things like strips and angled girders, double bent strips, that sort of thing. The rest is the same. This painted finish was the fairly short lived finish um, on the strips and angled girders and that, those sort of parts owing to it being quite poor. But we'll get into it in a bit. Now I've actually propped this one up so you can see it at a better angle perhaps than slightly falling away angle if you're doing something from above it or almost above it. This one, the box is, was better than I thought to be honest, I thought the box was a bit more tatty than this but when I brought them all back nearly well, over two months ago now I haven't got into the sets uh, or many of the sets um, much if at all since I've brought them back so it's a surprise um, it is a slow process videoing the sets building something videoing those or photographing whatever put them on the web and all that sort of thing but it, I think it's good although I wasn't going to do all of this it, I think it's good because it's going to record the sets as they are before they've been used and I will as I said will get round to using them all no matter what the conditions are whether they're bad or good, whether they're incomplete or not, if they're incomplete I will attempt to make the sets up and currently that's going on with the 1931 number 2 outfit which I haven't done a video on yet but I have posted a bit on the internet about. So this one then, I haven't looked at any date signs to narrow things down such as the manuals and the slight differences in uh, parts, colours or what have you, uh, like I did with the 7 set. Um, most of that information you can see there. I won't repeat all of it, I hope not anyway. So what have we got then with this set? Well the box is different. As you can see it's quite a large box. And just to give you an idea of the size of the box, I still have the number 7 set here. And here it is. And as you can see, I'll try not to knock it off that's in the left corner, lower left corner of the six box and the six box is quite bigger around the edge or most of the edges. Now the reason for that as you'll see in a bit it's a one tray system and I'm so glad they went to the two tray systems of course they did it before with the earlier sets and some of those were indeed two trays but of the plastic moulded variety, not polystyrene trays, in fairly traditional cardboard boxes. This one's a bit more modern and to be honest is more akin to the boxes that you get with perhaps Meccano sets of the last, oh, well until about 2013-14. And in some cases it's a bit similar today, in that it's a box that has end flaps. It's not got a lid like the 7 has. This one has got end flaps. I'll just show you there. As you can see, it folds open at the ends. Now, the trouble with end flaps is they are effectively their own hinge and thus can wear where the hinge is. As you can probably see, at certain points, perhaps not very clear from a front view, but certainly down this corner, it's a little bit dog eared, the box lid is. But it's such an ungained size, it looks impressive, it probably looks more impressive than the number 7. But it's very ungained and I've got two of these. The late 70s number 5 set is probably even bigger than this. Uh, and that's a one tray system. Yes it looks impressive, it, but it is ungained. But the benefit to me of these sets, or indeed any of the sets post war with the tray system and indeed with the card system pre-war is that many of the parts are sorted there for you you don't have to hunt through the bags and that 
if you had an equivalent model to make from a more modern set, like in the last 10 years or so, to one of these, and it's hard to see where you're going to get one that's really similar. Those older sets, to me, are much easier to do from the point that the parts are easier to find. Of course, things are probably evened up because the instructions in the older sets are not as clear, not as um, divided up. So I suppose, uh, I suppose overall things even up. But these do look impressive, but of course, today the boxes are probably quite expensive to make. So before we have a look on the rear of the box, let's have a quick look at the front in a bit more detail. I did sort of fall into the trap with the number 7 box of assuming that all those models pictured on the front of the box were number 7 set models. And of course, when you sit down and look at it a bit more closer, you realise that they aren't. It's the same here. Not all these will be six set models. Now if I remember rightly, for example, this dockyard shunting loco is a four set model. But some nice models anyway. Aircraft carrier, I dare say that is a number six. And this crane looks that sort of number six size. But we'll find out when we get through. We'll have a look through the instruction book a bit. Now this cruiser is interesting because I've actually seen that made. And it's one of the models I've got a plan for. Because somebody probably a couple of years ago, asked the question, or posed the question, would a Meccano boat float? Well, of course, in as they are built, no, they won't, will they? There's far too many things called holes. But the idea is, and I may have mentioned this before, is to build a smallish Meccano boat, and this cabin cruiser is about the right size, Seal it with a couple of layers of cling film round the hull. And see, just for the pure hell of it. So, models wise then, aircraft carrier, that looks very interesting. This crane, this shipyard crane, is a decent looking model as well. Of course there's loads of cranes in Meccano. We've got a car ferry. I have actually seen that shunt, uh, well, I say shunting locomotive, I suppose it says dockyard there. I have seen that made recently um, in the red and green. It's a nice size model actually, but it uses the road wheels in reverse as the train wheels, so if you wanted it to run on track, you'd have to do something about that. But overall, this set box is a little bit weathered. Um, I think this one, I don't know if this one there was a little cheaper than the other one because I've got two sixes. Um, there might have been £100 each or there or thereabouts. Of course, the bit more rarity in this one in that it's got that silver painted finish. So here's the rear of the uh, box showing plenty of models not all of which are made with this set some are bigger sets and some are smaller sets by the looks of it but I am working from memory there. Again you can see it's a little bit tired in the corners and a bit uh, worn but uh, essentially still all in one piece. So folks, we've got the tray out of the box with the instruction books and I've realised something that I missed from the number 7 set video. There's no 2 and 3 booklet as you can see on the left. Not as a problem of course because we've got one of this set but uh, most of the manuals are available online anyway for nothing. I've had to lay the tray more or less flat. Um, didn't want to do that because it doesn't really show it so good really as it being more in line with the lens of the camera but as I was taking it out of the box I could hear a few parts moving around and the cellophane is not as robust on this age or perhaps it's gone a bit more brittle which is every chance now it being what nearly well in the region of 50 years old and uh, it has been damaged I've just damaged it a little bit myself just trying to move some of the parts back into the slots and the spaces in the tray. Uh, I'll come on to that in a minute about trying to do that, a tip I was given. But uh, let's have a look at the instruction books first. Now obviously somebody's been in it because this instruction book is in a modern plastic sleeve. Now as this is the main one for the set it is in quite good condition and that plastic sleeves probably done a good job 
Let's have a look on the back to find the date code on this one. Here we are. June 65, 665. Now, we can narrow this set down quite well because of the several painted parts. I'll zoom in closer on those in a bit. But, we have several painted parts, such as strips of different lengths, angle girders, double bent strips, um, curve step strips looking around. So, we know it's of the period of probably mid-1964 to perhaps no later than mid-66. We'll just check the other manuals. And this one says January 67. Now that's interesting. Now, as I've said before many times, you do have to assume some things. This one, 1264. So, it may be then that certainly the smaller instruction books have been added in at a later date. And of course the box itself wasn't sealed, so they could have been lost of course. Now the set itself, well there you can see something that I hadn't noticed myself when I had a quick look inside, just, I just pulled the box out a little bit upstairs in the dim light, this is actually a plastic formed tray. Um, it's really like two together I suppose, almost there. But moulded together. But plastic formed tray, not unlike the, uh, I suppose, mid 50s to 1964 ones. But to be honest, not as robust. Very flexible. And this is one of the reasons why some of the parts had moved. The cranks had fallen out, some of these strips had moved. You can see the hook's still there. Now I was told how to try and move some parts when they're inside cellophane. And I tried it on a 1970s combat multi-kit to move a part into place with a magnet and sliding it. Now that set's got more robust cellophane and I still ripped that slightly. So for this I tried wetting the magnet and then just grabbing a part like these strips here on the edge. Now these strips did move quite well but it didn't work for everything and you can see there's holes and it's very flimsy it, at least it is these days and it's already got some splits as you can see anyway. This cellophane is very very light and flimsy and of course 50 odd year old so it's uh, it's probably well past its best. I gave up with the hook, I thought there's no way I can grab that, it's an alloy so I can't grab it with a magnet. Just the one tray level if you like. My research said that early on that the trays were two trays side by side but it looks moulded all in one to me that does, unless it's just two that is moulded together. There is a line down there, like see, every time I touch this stuff it's starting to rip. So very fragile there which probably don't make me feel as bad if I dig into it, which I will dig into it, of course, as I've said before. Now, my research suggested that the early sets were, as I said, two trays side by side, but as I say, it does look joined. And some of the tray is, around here, is starting to split. Even though the cardboard box is in reasonable condition, uh, it's just gone with age by the looks of it. Now the set parts as I said majority of the strips and curve step strips, double bent strips, angle brackets are silver painted. Not all of them though uh, I've noticed that these formed slotted strips here curved ones are zinc whereas these uh, pretty much bog standard curved step strips are painted as indeed these double bent strips and these angle girders and the strips this side. So another pointer to the early or earlier period of 
this uh, sort of mid sixties era were that the uh, the locating pins like drawing pins from the previous period up to sixty four were still in use and as you can see not every part but these five hole strips got a red pin in these semicircular plates green these flexible plates plates there green green one there reds there and a few over here not every part they I'd have thought these would have had them in but there's no sign of a pin in the box loose so um, that looks about right there we've got the grey tyres which point to earlier times don't know how good they are clean but I don't know how good they are to touch what I would recommend is if you have got tyres, rubber tyres on pulleys and you need a pulley but not have a tyre leave the tyre on the pulley and get a spare pulley because the rim, there's like a rubber rim inside the tyre that fits in the groove of the pulley it's bound to come off at this sort of age not guaranteed that it will but it is rubber of one description or another and it is old so these pins with this type of tray, this plastic tray do point to early on in this period about 1964 so we know which is obvious that these theme sets started in sort of mid 1964 with a takeover as Lions Brothers we know that it's probably only got about a two year spread of time because of the silver painted parts we also know that it's fairly early on because of the plastic vacuum formed tray that the parts fit in and the drawing pin type fixings that hold some of the parts in the tray itself there's another pointer and that is the small parts box which is this one the green metal one here now in around 1965 early 65 that changed to a plastic box with red ends so we've already narrowed it down to now perhaps less than at two years that all points to the original or rather the main instruction book in the set which says as shown before June 65, 665 which works out about perfect of course there is the other two instruction books as I've shown you earlier on which do throw up a little change, well certainly one does the uh, 0 to 1 instruction book is December 64 so that sort of aligns quite nicely with this but the uh, the final one that's this number 2 and 3 instruction book shows January 67 so I think we can narrow it down to mid 65 this set early 66 we got the polystyrene trays so I think as I said before in many videos you do have to assume a little bit but looking at the evidence we've got it may be that that 2 and 3 instruction book is put in sometime after the set was produced now perhaps this was old stock in the factory or a warehouse somewhere we'll never know that but a very nice set so there's just a few of the parts that are painted in this silver paint that's very like aluminium paint but it's not aluminium some of these parts of course very early on according to the research states that they were just green parts over painted so if you get anything that age it's liable that the silver paint is not very good at all or not much left of it very easily spoilt in use now I know the uh, camera will probably go a bit dark now with the shine yet to find the overexposure button on the thing and I've only added about two years <laughs> I'm going to show you some zinc strips alongside the painted ones now I know I'm picking up the light better there but I think you can see there there's a bit more shine a lot more shine to be honest and I know the uh, set parts are within the uh, confines of the box underneath the polystyrene 
but there is a definite brightness difference with the zinc plated parts, or at least decent ones. That's on a crane model, I have done a video of it, that's about, um, I don't know, 10, 12 year old, uh, 20 model, multi model set. Very good crane actually. So, there you can see the differences. Um, I'll find out, I suppose, just how easy it is to damage these parts. But it's safe to say that I will be using washers. There we have it, folks. I think with this one, we've narrowed this one down quite well to mid-1965. The Ocean Terminal, Meccano number 6 set. Parts-wise, very good. Well, mint. Box-wise, is starting to suffer from age regarding the tray and perhaps the cellophane again uh, very easy to damage the box itself the cardboard is quite dog-eared although it is all in just about one piece uh, there's no major tears and I think that points to this set as being out of its box just to have a look at it more often than others and I think the reason for that would have been to look at the silver finish on some of the parts the painted finish which you don't see a lot of. I've only got a few strips of myself, separate spare strips, and they're not in brilliant condition. And they're not that bad. I mean, I've got far worse green ones. But um, I dare say that a set like this, in this condition, at least parts wise, and essentially sealed still, are the trays, of course, not the box itself. Fairly rare, I would say. That ain't going to stop me using it. Every time I seem to touch it now, the cellophane rips so it has knocked some of the uh, well I suppose guilt really maybe not guilt's a bit of a strong word but I will get round to using it and I've already got in mind the model I'm going to build and here is the model that I hope to make with this set or possibly another number six set I've got upstairs which will be featuring in its own video soon this is model 6.9, the funicular railway, which you probably know better as a cliff railway. It's powered by a number one clockwork motor. And, as I mentioned in the number seven set video regarding the cable car, both that model and this will be rigged up to be run off a small model steam engine. Thus adding a little bit more interest and fun to the model. Earlier on in this video I did show the models on the back of the box and my thoughts were that some of them were from larger sets. Well a quick flick through this book now shows that that's not the case. All the models shown can be built with this set. So all those models are either number 6 or below. So there you have it folks. What appears to be a 1965 Meccano Ocean Terminal Set 6. Parts wise mint condition. Box and tray wise a little aged shall we say. Silver painted finish on some of the parts instead of zinc which helped us narrow down to as close as we have. Value wise I won't repeat everything I said in the 7th video but a bit of thought and perhaps I will be able to find the list of all these sets that I wrote down. I think this is around 120 but be careful as I've said before eBay can be your friend, it can be your enemy. So why not visit a Meccano show, such as Skegex, or Ingenuity, or perhaps one of the smaller meetings from one of the clubs. Usually you get at least one dealer at these events. Not all of them mind. Some dealers, just like eBay, are more expensive than others. Sometimes you can have bargains. Sometimes you have to be a bit more careful. The phrase is, of course, for all this, wherever you get them from, is shop around and be careful. See you again.